John chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this was I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Let's pray. Lord, even though we cannot be together today in person, all of us, on this special day in our liturgical calendar, May our scriptures today lift us, lift us, um, lift in us a hope, a new creation in us as we enter into a new season. For it says in 2 Corinthians 5 17, therefore, if anyone in Christ, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. So as we think about today's lesson, Almighty God, and as I give this message through the gift of technology together apart, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. So it is Reign of Christ Sunday. Uh, Reign of Christ Sunday is a marker uh, for the end of the liturgical year. It is a way of saying we wrap up a year's worth of worship by claiming again who we are, whose we are, (laughs) right? Uh, We reiterate our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The emphasis this week is to be of Jesus Christ. That is the kind of disciple that we are. We aren't disciples on our own wisdom. We aren't disciples following the winds of this world. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. What the John text tells us is that Jesus is the leader like no other. The rules by which other leaders lead do not apply to Jesus. To follow Jesus is to learn to be like him. And in this story, It means being willing to embrace a complicated truth over a a comfortable lie. In my message today, I'm going to give you a challenge for this week. Please plan to come back next Sunday and report on it during our sharing of the peace time when we do a turn and talk. Our worship this day should be about the elevation of Jesus the Christ. There should be praises sung. There should be allegiance declared. There should be confession about divided loyalty loyalty admitted. But even in the face of confession of sin, there is above it all a joy that is almost indescribable. We are who we are because of the one we call the son of God. We are made into a loving and serving community because of the Christ who loved and served the world. Jesus came to be in service, not to be served. We are told the truth about who we are because he is the truth made flesh before us. So let this day, this time of worship be a true celebration of hope and of joy and of the recognition that we can live a life that matters. Now we've jumped from Mark's gospel to John's gospel for this week. And Jesus replies to Pilate saying, 
my kingdom is not of this world. Now, what did he mean by that? Is our faith in the end about getting out of the world as unscathed as possibly, um, as we possibly can? Is, is our faith about some spiritual reality that has nothing to do with the flesh and blood and bone that we are right now? Is our faith just here to help us pass through this world so we can be apathetic as we make our way somewhere else? Uh, many of Jesus's followers throughout the centuries have placed their bets on that truth, right? My kingdom is not of this world. That sure sounds like it'd be describing our faith in one of those ways. I think that might lead to a life of apathy. Instead, Reverend Dr. Weber suggests we consider he was trying to describe a new way of living in this world imagining Christ's world, not trying to talk a bunch of spiritual mumbo jumbo. He was really trying to help Pilate see. Jesus went on to say, if my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. As if to say, if my kingdom were of this world, you'd have a war on your hands, an insurrection designed to get what we think we deserve. But that's not how we make our way in the world. Not the followers of Jesus. The revolution that Jesus is leading is like nothing we have ever seen. The world that Jesus is proclaiming, the kingdom, K I N. D-O-M, that Jesus is leading, reworks human relationship at its most fundamental level. Maybe forgiving people who we think don't deserve forgiving. Maybe loving people who we think don't deserve love. Power with, not power over. It's a whole new world that right now is beyond our ability to imagine unless we're living in Christ. And all of that flew right over Pilate's head. He grasped at the last straw. If we look back at that scripture reading to make sense of what Jesus is saying. And he says back to Jesus, so you're a king? And Jesus quickly gives it right back. You say, I am a king. As if he's saying to Pilate, you say, I am a king because you think in kings, you think in power, you think in conflict and authority and rule over. Now, from one of the commentaries I read this week, Dr. Reverend Samuel Cruz explains the values of Jesus's kingdom are so vastly different from those of this world that often we Christians fail to understand them. The church, which purports to and should represent Jesus's kingdom, is here to serve in humility rather than to seek earthly power. Jesus is the king, yet he does not arrive in a chariot, but on a donkey. Jesus is a king who is killed by those with societal power, not a king who is victorious over his enemies by defeating them in war. Now, here's that challenge for the week that I talked about earlier. In light of what Jesus could be sharing here, that if we could all only imagine his world, then things in this world could be different. We all know that how we say things affects how we view things, affects our perspective in life. So to change our behaviors, let's practice changing how we talk. Here's the challenge. What if we stopped using war language for one day? So try it this week, pick a day. For example, if you're going to talk to someone about somebody else who's fighting cancer, instead of saying she's battling cancer with chemotherapy, say she is generate, say something like she is generating healthy cells with chemotherapy. If you're discussing a, a football game, a basketball game, instead of saying team A destroyed and or defeated team B, say team A had a successful game against team B. For one day, 
Do not allow yourself to use any war language, no warlike metaphors or allegories. And notice the second part of the challenge is to notice how hard it is and reflect on this with regard to the conversation between Jesus and Pilate. Frankly, I could be Pilate for all that, for all intensive purposes. We all could. Because it was really difficult for Pilate to imagine any kind of different world. And he fell prey to this world's understanding of truth, of truth, of real power, Christ-like power. Reflect on how this might help you better understand how difficult it was for Pilate to understand imagining a different world. How humanness holds us to the understanding of power that this world offers us. Clear juxtapositions of us versus them, clear delineations of right versus wrong, dark versus light, good versus bad. This is reign of Christ Sunday. It used to be called Christ the King Sunday, but maybe we've been listening to this conversation long enough to recognize that we're being challenged on the whole King idea. So don't misunderstand. It isn't that we no longer want to claim that Christ is our guide, our example, our savior and friend, that all true authority rests in Christ. It's just that history tells us that a king rules by fear, by threat, by military might, and that maybe we've been doing a disservice to the one who came to live among us and be God with us by calling him king. In this conversation, Jesus seems to want to avoid that nomenclature, avoid being called king. So what's left? Where do we go from here? We follow Jesus. We want to talk about uh, kingdoms. We want to talk about truth and kingdom, K-I-N-D-O-M. That's where Jesus went with this king idea. I have come to bear witness to the truth is what I believe he's saying there, right? The truth about living, the truth about faith, the truth about meaning and purpose, the truth about grace and reconciliation. This is the truth that Christ came to testify to. That power isn't power over, but Christ power. Christ power is power with us. Christ doesn't rule with fear or threat, or military might. Christ rules with love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Christ came to serve, not to be served. And that is the example Jesus set for us so that we may live in Christ and Christ may live in us. That first Corinthians verse I noted in our prayer this morning, or it's second Corinthians, actually second Corinthians, um, verses Um, chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here, right? So today is a day for declaring our intention to live a life that matters, a life of radical generosity that holds all our possessions and our very lives Lightly, because it understands the fragility of life. It is a life of taking the long view. And while living fully in each moment, not letting this moment define all of existence or to shape our hope. And now a life of belonging to the truth, a truth that transcends individual limited perspective and allows the community to hear the voice of Christ as the guide and hope for living a life that matters. Peace be with you.